Falling through time. Variations on a sonnet. She put her arm in mine and smiled alive and kind and soaked in lime. She tamed the fox but wolves are wild because she put her arm in mine and smiled. She put her lips to mine and kissed forever feeling empathy. She tried to find the time she missed because she put her lips to mine and kissed. She put her heart in mine and sighed with a hope that's not forgotten. She let me climb inside her mind because she put her heart in mine and sighed. She held my hand and she made me feel better. I gave her my soul so I'd never forget her. Skeptics don't have churches. Skeptics don't have churches because churches are for worship and subverting the learned or turning into art centres so that skeptics can perform their sceptical poetry. There's a need for poetry, although people don't know that they need it. They think they need homeopathy and psychics and mediums who communicate with the dead through an earpiece. And skeptics and poets are needed to reveal the chicanery these crazies enable. When a psychic is controlled by the dead and they speak in the voice of a child, there are two main explanations. One, that they're actually being controlled by a dead child and it has nothing to do with their earpiece piece or cold reading techniques that Darren Brown could use to successfully fool the weak and vulnerable, but chooses not to. Two, that they're knowingly pretending to be controlled by a dead child in front of its grieving mother and a paying audience of thousands for profit. Psychics of the world you, but of course you knew I was going to say that. Like a landlocked lighthouse. My friends live their lives online and so do I and sometimes I agree to see them to see if they're real and not just pictures on Flickr and Instagram. Mum said I'd grow up one day and I'd change the way we communicate but maybe she's crazy. I'm 26 years old and I spend my life behind computer screens reading Wikipedia because it's easier than dealing with people. Some people treat their life like a staging site. They're afraid to get stuck in so they stand out. You know the type with their undead eyes so stubborn like a landlocked lighthouse. Time to get out from behind the screen and start living. Now you have an aphorism to live by. Being a terrorist sympathiser. My Prime Minister, the elected representative who I didn't elect and who doesn't represent me, reminds me of a piece of ham stuck to the bottom of my shoe. But then, I've always hated and it seems clear to me that history is repeating. I don't sanction bombers over Syria or over anywhere and people are so goddamn blind that they can't see that this new development is a product of fear in the media. Like when the American government used 9-11 to deploy the Patriot Act. Not in my name. Never in my name. I learned back in primary school that two wrongs don't make a right. Why aren't we bombing America to stop domestic terrorists from entering elementary schools with machetes? Bomb Chicago, bomb New York, bomb Washington DC, bomb Boston, Massachusetts, bomb Austin, Texas. I don't mean to be a cynic, but I am one, and Oscar Wilde was wrong. I see the value of everything and the cost of nothing, which is why I see through the My Prime Minister used verbal insults, false logic and propaganda to win over the opposition. He's a good politician and a terrible human being, a deadly combination when facing danger. Kiss Kiss Death Death Kiss Kiss Death Death War 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 Oil spills and corruption and too much booze to handle. Charity death matches with reality TV stars played out in magazines with names like Feel Good and You. Natural hypocrisy born not from dishonesty but democracy because feelings change over time as evidence comes to light and that's a good thing. Dead romance from an undead romantic making decisions independently then forming committees to arrive at the same decision six months later when you've lost your competitive advantage. Documentaries about Auschwitz daring me to dare to be depressive but it's fine for presidential candidates to add Muslims to a database. Database this month. Last night I dreamt. Last night I dreamt I put my hand on your thigh in full view of a dozen people as we sat around a table and you liked it but you made me take it off. It was only a dream but it seemed and it seemed so real, more real than the birds that call while the frost thaws. I'm sure there was more but I can't remember it, it must have got lost in the excitement. Last night I dreamt I put my hand on your thigh, that's about it, I never said you'd find it interesting. Bad habits. Every mother crazy and I'm tired of waiting patiently for lazy wasters who think they're better than me because they find comfort in TV which just depresses me. There's so much evil in the world and if you want to smell the roses then do so. Every day is the same and it's a shame that nothing changes. I wake up, go to work, spend the daylight hours analysing data like a mathematician when I quite clearly have a way with words, fill out my timesheets, head home, wait for the evening to pass, go to sleep and wake up again. That's just life, we're creatures of habit, and my habits have a habit of getting me into trouble. Still, it breaks the monotony, and I'd rather be kicked in the teeth and ignored completely, although neither option is particularly appealing. But it's not all bad. Sometimes I see in rainbows, and I'm overwhelmed by the beauty of music, and sometimes I appreciate the sunshine, even if it is just a chemical reaction. Perfume. 
My sense of smell is underdeveloped, probably because I smoke too much and don't pay attention to the world around me. But every now and then I'm overwhelmed when I walk past a stranger and their smell seems strangely familiar. It's possible to travel back in time for a split second and to come back again, but you can't travel forward unless the smelling salts you sniff are laced with hallucinogens, which is probably surprisingly common. If I was a scientist, I'd try to find a way to give computers the sense of smell, but without the emotions attached to it. Lobby your local Apple store, the people demand smell telescopes on iPhones, but then some perverse f***er would take up skirt photography to its logical conclusion and I don't want to be a part of that. I just want to search through smells to try to recapture my childhood. Next year. Next year there will be no double negatives. I'll hold my head up high and shine bright lights from skyscrapers, fall over a couple times and scrape the skin from my knees in the name of science and alcoholism. I'll Touch people like they've never been touched. Have people crying in surprise and delight when I sacrifice lives the night before Christmas in front of a million witnesses. Next year, I'll be an efficient machine that's keen to please and slightly evil, bringing meaning to people like a Star Wars sequel. I'll shake hands with strangers who are half crazed and dangerous, turn over some pages so I can clean my slate and act my age again, grow old gracefully and maybe patiently. I'll memorize words I haven't written yet about people I haven't met and places I haven't been to. I'll set the world on fire and put it out again. Scream. Sometimes I want to scream, but I can't scream because I'm in the middle of a crowded restaurant or sitting at my desk at work, but I'm still screaming, you just can't hear me. And from behind the screen, I seem to be sinking. My life is one long sustained scream from screaming, look at me, age six on park swings to screaming about the color of my soul, age 26 at open mic nights in the hope that someone's listening. Not to the meanings of the words or the sounds that they make as they roll off my tongue, but to the hidden scream beneath them. Or is it a howl? Howls remind me of two things, Wolves and Allen Ginsberg, and perhaps I'm a mixture of the two. It might be a scream and it might be a howl, but it sure feels good to let it out.